he had a plan for her to mother. And he had a plan for me to be born. He had a plan for my life. And he had a plan for my kids and my grandkids. And if that link is broken somewhere, that plan, similar to abortion, destroys the purposes of God. The purposes that he set into play at the beginning of creation when he said to Adam, go forth and multiply. Fascinating. Hmm. Did you go right home and tell Trent? <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, and it wasn't a quick process, um, uh, becoming pregnant. It was, it was a hard process. And um, recently I've been learning about Advent leading up to Christmas. And it, hmm. there are four weeks of sorrow. Um, four weeks of lamenting um, what we aren't and who we aren't in mm. terms of um, our relationship with Christ. And then the celebration, the birth. And we had our advent. We, we had a miscarriage. We, um, we had an adoption that ended up um, going sour. The, the mother changed her mind. So again, it felt like another miscarriage. And, and then um, God told me, a bruised reed I will not break. And, um, That's right out of Isaiah. Yeah. And the same week he told uh, Trenton that he would restore a child to us. And the following week in March of this year, or the, yeah, this year, um, he, I found out that I was pregnant again. It's within the year, honey. Yeah. Hey, I'm not <laughs> responsible for that part. That was his word. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> And <clears throat> your faith. Mm -hmm. on November 12th, Mm -hmm. Five weeks ago. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. Hmm. Cannot believe we are this close in our celebration to this wonderful birth. And we, your sister arrived from Calgary last mm -hmm. night. And we're going to ask Meredith to just come right in here mm -hmm. with this little miracle. Thank, Thank you Meredith. so much, Meredith. <laughs> Aunt Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Mom, would you like to introduce? Um, this is Aiden Gray. Aiden Gray. Yes. Uh, his name means pleasant little fire. Mm. <laughs> and he was a whopping eight pounds, two ounces at birth yeah. five weeks ago. Yeah. Honey, when did you find out about this? Oh, it was, uh, I guess, maybe three, four months ago. Uh, Joanna called and uh, actually emailed and, and gave me the good news. Joanna and Webster in our Joanna guesting Webster. department. Yeah, and uh, she asked if we'd be able to arrange a time to get together and talk about what happened and how it happened. It, uh, it means so much to us mm -hmm. to have been, I mean, there was something electric about that day. There was. Uh, you weren't leaving. You, you and your wife were... <laughs> we were lingering. You were lingering, <laughs> and, and uh, there was purpose in yeah. your eyes. <laughs> And a little fear in these eyes, but mm. but not now. How is mommyhood? It's um, a constant learning how to, because you always want to be a better person for this little person. And it, it's also helping me um, with my health. It's it's. When I was pregnant, I, I had to eat because I had a life inside of me, and it was such a gift. I couldn't abuse this gift. Mm. And now, again, um, nursing him, I need to keep eating to sustain him. And, you know, we want, oh, Lord willing, we can have siblings for him. So, again, keep eating, keep, keep living for others, you know. And in doing so, I need to learn to love myself enough to eat just for myself. Mm. <laughs> it all sounds good, doesn't it, Hanny? It's awesome. It's awesome. We better bring the dad in on this, just with a picture at oh, least. Yeah. Uh, we've got mom and dad with baby. Here's Trenton. Oh, wow. This looks pretty early. Is this the day of? The day of. Oh. He's pretty proud there. Mm. <laughs> and there's another. Oh, let's just show the other picture. I know we've got mom here, <laughs> but I think um, these are first moments that are yeah. so special. Yeah. Hanny, I know you were going to say something there, and I jumped to a picture. No, you know. My reference point is scripture for a lot of what I think and what I do, and it's what it's all about. And we live in faith. Uh, our father of faith, Abraham, his wife was barren. His son Isaac, who was born out of faith, his wife was barren. His son Jacob, who was also promised to be the father of the nation of Israel, his wife was barren. So barrenness and, and infertility seems to be going right back to our roots mm. because of the destiny that God has for the children that are yet to be born. Mm. 
and the enemy fights tooth and nail to keep that from happening. Mm. But at the same time, uh, when Sarah was barren, and Abraham ended up in Egypt because of the famine, God was in that. There was something else going on. There was. And uh, when Abraham introduced her as his sister to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh took her as his wife, just imagine what would have happened if Sarah was not barren, whose si child she would have born. And I would Israel have had its greatest prophet in Samuel if Hannah hadn't been strung out to complete heartbreak and, and possibly anorexia. She yeah. wasn't eating. Yeah. Yeah. And then she cried out to God. And there was a man of God that declared the word of God, which was life. And in my mom's case, there was a man of God that declared to her the word of life. And in Emily's and Aidan's and Trent's case, there was a man of God that declared God's word, the word of life. And I feel that today we need to do that. We need to do that to couples that are unable to conceive and to declare the word of God over their lives. Uh, we don't always understand why things happen and don't happen when it comes to healing or, or breakthroughs like that, but we trust God and He's able. So even in the case of Sarah, when she was still barren but hadn't given up hope in Egypt, when she was with Pharaoh, God had kept her barren to keep her womb safe from conceiving Pharaoh's child. So there's a reason that we don't always understand. So I'd like to just speak that word to our viewing audience and to others that are watching that God has a purpose. And even in your pain right now, He is with you. He desires you to be all that you are as an individual, as a couple, husband and wife. And, and infertility is not a problem of one or the other, so there's no blame. So put all that stuff aside. Uh, it's just the circumstances of life that have brought us to where we are. But God's word says to us that I want to bless you with life. And he has a destiny for that unborn child. So I want to speak life to you that you would conceive, that you would become fruitful, that you would bear, and that you would not walk in shame whether you conceive or not, but that you would walk in the freedom that Christ came to secure for you. And I would pray that you do bear children. And in every one of the cases in Scripture, all the barren women in Scripture bore children, except for one, Saul's daughter who mocked David when he was worshiping. And it says that the Lord shut her womb. And that was judgment. But in all cases, other than that, they bore children. So you also can bear a child. And at this time where we celebrate Christmas, may the life of God that gave birth to a miracle baby from a womb that was a virgin's Boom. that you also today would bear the child that God has destined you to mother and to father. And may the Lord grant you peace in the process. What a wonderful word. I'm sure some hearts were encouraged just to hear you speak. And I know you've prayed with many who have conceived. Yeah. Hanny, you yeah. and Silva, what a, what a wonderful yeah. side of your ministry. It's just speaking the word of the Lord and the Lord does the rest. There's no glory in us and, and there's nothing in us that we do. It's all His doing. Prayer of faith. Yeah. And Emily, uh, you bear fruit in many ways. Mm. Uh, one of the wonderful surprises is a book that is coming, Chasing Silhouettes. And who is this written to? This is written um, to families of anorexics, families who are uh, just at their wits end to know how to help their loved one. Um, it goes through five different sections of like um, just recognizing the disease, um, rendered helpless in the middle of the messiness, um, then recovery, and then finally uh, renewal, which is teaching the actual former anorexic how to live in health. Could I take them? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> well, that's something that already I'm sure we have people thinking, I could use that right now. Yeah. So hopefully it's close. Yeah, here's hoping. <laughs> well, God bless you, all mm. of you. This is just a beautiful moment. Mm. And uh, we saw a picture of your art in that last slice, uh, Emily. Uh, we don't have time mm. for that show and tell today, that's but that's just another expression of, of life, mm -hmm. strong and growing. And uh, we're just rejoicing mm. with you and Praying for Silva, who couldn't be here yeah. today. Please give her our love. I will. And a Merry Christmas to all of you. Somebody's awfully content there, yeah. Hannah. <laughs> I should have handed him over a while ago. <laughs>